Okay, it looks like I'm live. Hi, everybody. I am not sure where Bob's at. Ed said that he's coming, but he's watching the end of a football game with his dad and eating ice cream, so he might be a little bit late. And Blackie said he might be a little bit late because he just got back from town and he's making lunches for everybody. So, I'm here. Hi. <laughs> Hi, TJ, Cat. Hi, Mojo. Hi, Trash Cat. Um, anybody else? Let's see here. I can say, well, we'll have a few more people here in a minute. We've got Grasshopper, Havana, if she's coming, and Frank stopped by to say hi. So we'll give it a few minutes. Hi, Grasshopper. I have a bit of a catastrophe. I have a couple pieces of art that I don't know where I put them. <laughs> but I've got I've got a couple little things. And then I got some uh five by sevens, but I think I'm gonna try them on Facebook and then maybe here. Because I kind of want to start something on Facebook in my on my page on Facebook. So, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I went to grab some stuff and it's like, where the hell did I put them? I don't know. But I do have two little things. I have a bunny rabbit. It is a baby bunny. Let me see if I can show it without it being too blurry. It's still kind of blurry. Doesn't I hate the webcam doesn't really show the detail. It just shows like blotches of light and dark. And then I've got, of course, the axolotl. If anybody likes axolotls, I've got an axolotl. And he's pretty cute. And then the baby, baby cottontail. Like I say, if I get a chance, I'll see if I can find the other ones if, when people get here. But um, I can't stay on really late tonight because I got a, a notice from my from my internet company saying that they were going to be doing some routine maintenance and would have rolling basic blackouts for the internet tonight for about six hours so we'll see how that goes but hopefully they won't be for I think they're going to be like 15 to 20 minutes if it blacks out which is not a good thing but yeah, what can you do? But I think they're not going to start for a couple hours yet, so we'll see how it goes. So, we don't have very many people in yet, but we'll give it a chance. We've got eight peoples. Like I say, Ed, Ed is going to be a little bit late, and Blackie's going to be a little bit late, and I have no idea what Bob is doing. Hopefully... He is not having blood sugar problems. He's been having his blood sugar problems for the last couple of days. And I hope that that's not what's going on with him. Let me see what else we got going on here. Yep, I just see Ed and Michael's both saying they'll be a little bit late. And that's all I see right now. But that's kind of frozen. There we go. I don't see any messages from Bob, so I guess I'm not sure what's up with him. Oh, there's Bob. Hey, I just got here. I was worried about your blood sugar levels and hoping you weren't having problems. Oh, no, I'm doing good. Sorry. I was over in a TikTok live stream with that couple I was talking about. I mean, they were live streaming. And I was uh, in the chat that they were doing some feeding of their sand boas and stuff. Oh, and cool. they, were talking, they were talking about how they were going to have to get some mice because their mice weren't breeding. And she said, does anybody else breed mice and I'm like well I guess I'm breeding so I said yeah 
So they were asking me how I keep them and all that. And they have a couple of those same condo things I have. Yeah. Somebody, somebody gave them when they bought their snakes from them. And they've been keeping their snakes in just like plastic tubs. And I said, no, nah. they seem to really like, you know, to be able to get out and have fresh air. And I told them what I was feeding them and all that. So that's where I was at. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. They're just breeding on their own, but. Yeah, apparently what I'm doing is working. Yep, apparently they're happy enough because they're breeding. Right. I've got to break down two of my two of my habitats while I'm on here tonight and treat the snake since when I was holding that snake last night, the new one. Yeah. I looked down and he had a couple of nights on him. So that's why I put him back in kind of a hurry. Uh, of course, there weren't any on me. They don't like warm blooded. But, so I've got to treat him and his girlfriend and the snake next door to him. Yeah, mites aren't good. They're hard to get rid of sometimes. Yeah, I don't want to get it started. I'm checking everybody. Yeah. Hey there. Hey, baby. One of my kids hey, got a baby. snake part from a um a snake place in Colorado that specializes in in all kinds of snakes. And um, when we were there, while we were there, they discovered mites on one of their snakes. So they were like checking them all. And yeah, and we got her snake, and sure enough, we got it home, and it had mites. So. They're easy to spray. It took a little bit because of the fact that she had like cork, the cork bark stuff. Yeah. Hide they, and stuff like that. And boy, that. They can hide. That cork, it just got covered. That cork bark was just absolutely covered in mites. So yep. she had like ended up having to toss that. Yeah. You know, I had them for what, like a year ago, something that the night that I was getting the big snake. It grazed me. That was what I was doing. Mites. Yeah. And uh, well, Ed says he'll be here pretty quick. He was finishing watching up yeah. a football game and eating ice cream with his dad. And Blackie said that he just got back from town and was fixing lunch for everybody and then he'll be in. So hopefully we'll have a couple more people here in a few. Ed says he'll be right back in the chat. Um, I, there's this little lady, she's 91 and every now and then on a Sunday when I'm just flipping through TikTok, she'll be on there and her daughter's like my age, I guess, or a little older. And she's a hoot. That lady's lived such a great life, but she's real, um, supportive of, I guess, the, the LGB, the gay community. Yeah. Anyway, so, and she has her little flag and stuff like that. And people. People will say things like she probably didn't even know what that means you know how nasty people can be but she yeah. does i mean she's real sharp but she was talking today about somebody uh that she said you know fire island in new york is a gay community and cherry grove and you know i didn't know all this i lived in new york but anyway she was talking about that well she said i met um a um female impersonator i guess it's just okay to say drag queen but named so-and-so and do you know that got referred to me you know how youtube refers things to you so i've been sitting like the last hour or laying in bed resting watching uh that that drag queen uh, not just at it like just walking to her job on or his job whatever on fire island there and then telling jokes one after another and he's got some great jokes anyway i'll do anything to for entertainment pam I'm desperate. Hate you. And can't. And then when that went off, I was got referred my my snake people on TikTok. Well, I thoroughly support the LGBT community, but then I have one child who is trans and one child who is bi. So, and um, but Wyoming is pretty terrible. So, yeah, I knew you had the one that was trans. It shared that with me a couple years ago. Yeah. And then 
um, Wyoming has like they got a big thing going on and Lar Laramie's really bad. Laramie is really bad. And um, they got a big thing going on now to where one of the there's a trans woman who is going to college and the people that she was rooming with, the kids she was rooming with, started picking on her and made it almost impossible for her to live there. And now they're claiming that, you know, she's the aggressor and it's just a big mess. And of course, Wyoming being Wyoming there and Laramie being like Laramie, they'll probably end up driving her out because that's what Laramie does. Laramie has um, a history of not good things. Like um, one of the cases that's brought yeah. up a lot in the community is this kid that was going to college and um, he disappeared and they found him a couple days later, like draped on a barbed wire fence out in the country dead. Is that that Matthew? I think so, yeah. But that yeah. happened in Laramie. That happened here. Oh. It happened here. There's somebody that there was a real famous. And he, was, he was killed entirely for being gay. That was it. Yeah. That was a big crime. It may be the one that was so famous. I think that was like the start of the hate crime, the hate laws and stuff. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this was. This was. This, this is like a really famous case, and it's brought up a lot. And, yeah, it happened here in Laramie. So Laramie doesn't have the best history with stuff like that, which is why when my kid started coming out, I, I told them to um, they need to go somewhere else and not stay here. As much as I miss them and I don't like being by myself, I also don't want my kids killed. It says, What's that? Did you see that? Craig says that his kids are by. Yeah. And he thinks most kids are now. I think a lot of them are, yeah. I've got um, one of my daughters is by, And then one, one of my kids is trans. And, um, and one of my kids is in a, how do you say it? Polygam poly whatever relationship poly polygamous yeah something like that something i'm not like sure that. i think that's it so it's just the way of the world now but you know it's just the way things are but wyoming is not a good place for any of that stuff yeah because wyoming is full of redneck cowboys <laughs> Tennessee's not either, actually. As long as they're happy, exactly, exactly. I don't care who Tennessee they're. It's not my business. And as long as they're happy, that's what counts. Tennessee keeps getting in the national news for stuff about that. About the they passed laws here recently. Yeah, Laramie's in the national news right now because there. of that trans girl that's having so much trouble in the college. And they're in the national news. Laramie's in the national news right now. In fact, I didn't even hear about it. It was one of my kids like said, hey, have you seen this? And they sent me some articles about it. And I was like, and they're in Oregon. So, yeah. Yeah. So, let's talk about something else. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's Wyoming. I think and as Laramie long as people is. are happy and they're not hurting you, then you should fuck off. Huh? I said, I think if people, as long as people are happy and they're not hurting you. Yeah, that's it. Mind your own business. Mind your own business. Yeah. Yeah. Mind Even your business. Got time to worry about their business. Somebody, I don't give a shit who, what, who's people's, what, what people or who people sleep with. I don't care. I'm not that bored. Yep. Exactly. 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 So anyway, I guess that was semi-political, and we aren't supposed to be doing political stuff on here. But so uh, we'll I guess it was. It might have been, but uh, it didn't create any problem. It looks like in chat, so I'll, I'll allow it as a mod. I'll allow it. You will. Okay. Thank you. 
I've had to call you down though a couple of times over the years. I know you have, you have. Or remind you rather. Yeah, it was a big national news thing, TJ. The boy that was found on the barbed wire fence. Yeah. Like I said, the only thing he did, the only reason he was killed is because he was gay. And that started a lot of movement to get that kind of stuff stopped, the hate crimes. Oh. And it, it is a really famous case. And a lot of people don't realize that that actually happened here in Laramie. I meant to ask you last night, Rick, if you were doing those isopod bins. He told me earlier um, that he was going to be resetting some of his isopod bins. Oh, that's cool. He says he's still working on them. You could come up and show us if you if you wanted to. Oh, he says he can't text too much. Oh, because his hands are dirty? Okay. I thought you were doing voice to text but when it said B-E-N-Z for bins. This is day two. Damn, my knee's hurting like a bitch. Oh. I guess I should do these tanks now before Ed and Blackie get in here or get them started anyway. I just have to... Let me put some pants on and I'll join. Yeah, put mm -hmm. pants on before you join. That's that's like a prerequisite. Well, you've never required me to wear them. <laughs> I'm not wearing them now. I think when I stood up last night to do something, I probably stood up right in front of the camera in my underwear. I don't think anybody cares. As long as nobody complains. Yeah, that'll be something good to watch while I'm, I'll mute my sound and, and do this and be done with it. Grease these snakes up with some mic killer. Grease them up. Grasshopper says, don't worry, I clipped it, Bob. I thought, I wondered <laughs> when I did it. Damn. Yeah, you got to watch that grasshopper. He does stuff like that. Damn it. Oh, my ankles are so huge tonight. Yeah, my, Come here, boo-boos. You want me to send you some of my Lasix in the mail? What's that? Um, you want me to send you some of my Lasix in the mail? That'll take that swelling down overnight. Oh, yeah. I'll send you some potassium, hello. too, so your legs don't cramp. Hey, Rick. Hello, hello. How's it going, little girl? Come here, boo-boos. Where are you at? Here. Am I on? Come You're here, on. Boo -boo. See you in here. Yeah. So, yeah. The front. So when you reset pod um, colony, how do you reset it? Because I always just keep mine in my tanks, you know, keep them bioactive so I don't need a separate thing. So to keep them in. After a while, they turn all the soil into frats. So this is. I find. This is mostly just isopod poop at this point, and that creates ammonia in the in the substrate. Yeah. After a while. So what I do is I use topsoil and compost. And I mix it in with the soil that I've made personally in that bin over there. Um, this is what I sift out and I reuse all this old bark and stuff. I sift that out when everything dries out. Yeah. All old bark pieces, leaves. I sift it all out. Sometimes there's ice pods in there. So I go through the next couple of days and they usually come to the top and then I sort those out to each each bin that they belong but i put all the soil in one one entire bin and i always have cork bark on hand but this is my last little piece that i have so i have to make it work how do you uh, get so them to come to the top i missed that oh they find their way up 
um, you just keep stirring the soil and then they come up to the top. Right now, these are the, um, I don't know if the camera's, these are the, um, dang it, my brain. Dalmatians, Dalmatians. What about the teeny tiny babies? Do you end up losing some of them or do you manage to get them? I managed to get them over time. Hey, Malo. Yeah, so um, I just take and take everything out that I can. That's uh, leaves and stuff that I'm going to reuse and go through everything, make sure it's usable. Like uh, this is not usable. It's it's basically spent. It's cuddle bone, but it's it's down to that little shell that they don't use. This is all the spent stuff, but I can grind that down and make something out of it, like a like a sprinkle or something for uh, their substrate. So I take all the old pieces out, knock all the stuff I don't want off of it. This is how the substrate looks when it's basically nothing but grass. That's all ice pot food. Ah, uh, huh. You want it to be like a richer soil, kind of like that. Yeah. So what I do is I mix it in with the compost and the uh, topsoil that's uh, locally and organically sourced from the forest here. And... Uh, that gives them all the, the nutrients that they need all over again, because they eat soil. They eat soil and leaves. And then I, I make my own ice pod food. That saves me a lot of money. Hi, everybody. Who's that? Dr. Black. Hello. How's it going, Rick? No, oh, good, I'm good. Just doing the old ice pod sort. It's a good excuse to play in the dirt, isn't it? Oh, man, I love playing in the dirt. Of course, I got to wear gloves because I don't want to cross-contaminate. And some of this stuff can get pretty moldy. Like underneath the, underneath this part right here. That's why I changed the substrate because this gets filled with mold after a while. And then if you start it over, um, basically you start with good, clean, nutritious substrate. And then Craig, Craig gave me the good idea of using a, uh, he told me a cat litter box sifter, but this right here works wonders to pull, get this, the ice pods out of there. You just shake them out, wow. all the big ones. That's very good. I didn't realize, I, I've been doing it the whole whole time the hard way. I, I was sitting there sorting through them, waiting for them to climb to the top. That cut my time in half. Yeah, but it's probably too big for the baby, so, huh? The babies are the ones I got to wait for. I put them off. So this is what I do with the leftover, all the soil in one bin. And I I, grow, I let the babies grow out on this. Uh -huh. I usually use the pork bark that I don't really use anymore. It's, it's all spent. They basically chewed to where it's almost light as a sponge. Wow. They make little uh, holes and stuff throughout this stuff. And eventually it's you can still use it, but it's not, uh, eh. but I put all of it in one and then I just let them grow out and then I can tell what's what later on. Oh, you put all the, all the babies from the different kinds together. Yeah. And then I can tell what's what as they get older and they, they kind of help each other. Uh, they don't eat each other or anything. So it helps build that colony up. So what I do is I leave this in here. That's all the stuff I'm going to use for the, the new bin. And there's, of course, ice pods on here. So I just leave those in there for now. And then I need to find another bin for this stuff. Hi, Aqua's in. Hello. I'm making a mess. That's my last little bit of sphagnum moss. I'm almost out. I gotta go buy a big old bag of it again. So I can use this bin 
and I can round up all the sphagnum moss. The sphagnum moss is still good on the top, so I can use that. And there's ice pods, lots of ice pods in there. I try to scrape off the top without grabbing all the mold, moldy uh, sphagnum moss in that corner. Yeah. I do it until I see white. I don't pull any more after that. Uh, look, some mold is good. It, this isn't, I think it's more of a fungus because it doesn't smell like uh, fart or nasty. It smells more sweet. If you know what I mean, like a mushroom, kind of yeah. like uh, almost as sweet as a portobello. Huh. Yeah, no, it's. I think it's just from. I use mycelium in my my substrate. I I feed my substrates with uh, actual mycelium spores, and that and the wet side always gives me some kind of mushrooms. But after a while, when it turns into nothing but trash, so now I just kind of like. Not try. I just kind of lightly crumble up the big chunks without squishing them. Yeah. They kind of just jump out or take off running whenever you pick them up. Anyway, if they're these ones actually play dead. So this one will start moving here in a little bit. Do they roll up into balls? No, these ones are, um, if I can get it on the camera. These ones actually just stop moving and they close, they clamp their legs to their body. Oh, okay. There we go. It's starting to move. Oh, yeah. How many years have you been doing this? Oh, just just started about a year ago. I just watched a lot. I just like anything I do. I, do, I watch a lot of videos, and I I do some reading. I found some good books on them. I spend a lot of my time watching YouTube and learning new things. Never bored. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's, this whole room is basically just uh, turned into a, a lab of just little experiments, and I keep myself busy. If not, I just go stir crazy. I gotta have something to do. So yeah, Craig gave me this idea to shake him out of here. I think I asked you this before. Does Kayla have any pets or? Animals. No, she don't. She has a betta fish. That's right. Yes, Captain. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a red and what do you call it? Uh, the red, white, and blue color uh, betta fish. He's a scrawny little thing, though. I don't think he's the most healthiest. A lot of the betta fish are. I, I got them from Petco, so I kind of asked for that, huh? I've gotten some nice ones from Petco before, though. Some of them are just small. This one has not grown big like all the other ones we've ever had. I guess some species are a little, or different colors or patterns or smaller. I'm not sure. It's very strange. So, yeah, I just sort the, through this. Huh? I've noticed the glowfish ones don't get very big. Yeah, I, the brighter color ones seem to be just, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's different. Let me make this little, nice. so this is, two knots on it. Two this is why it takes, oh, my legs fell asleep. This is why it takes so long to do this. Because it's so tedious, you have to... Literally, you see how they start to come to the top? I can yeah. take and scoop them out and put them in this 
I can put them in the, the sphagnum moss right here because I'm going to put the sphagnum moss in the new culture. And I'm going to take half the substrate and put it in the new culture with the new, the new substrate. That way I keep all my little microfauna and everything. And whatever I sub whatever substrate I end up with left over after I pull all the ice pods that I can out, I I throw it in my uh, reptile enclosures. Ah, okay. For the plants. Yeah. And the frass actually is highly beneficial to the uh, to the plants in the reptile enclosures. Yeah, these guys just. I could just keep going this, doing this for an hour or so. Mm -hmm. See any more on there? But if I just do this, you just kind of see them pop up. Yeah. Almost like raising from the grave. It's weird. But I do this, I'd say every six months now, it's like the, about the full year. I don't know, when when was the first time I ever showed you guys the ice spots? That's probably when oh, I started. I have no idea. I do Probably six or eight months. Yeah, so I was, I was pretty much getting the hand up hang of everything at that point but so i've big. i've sold so many isopods it's just crazy they just keep reproducing they don't stop and that's why i change the substrate because if i don't uh they'll crash the right. colonies will crash Some bins I have to split because there's too many of them, and I don't sell those sometimes. Some species I don't sell that much, and they reproduce and reproduce, and then pretty much uh, when I put 10-count isopod cups, I, uh, I actually give more than 10. I usually do like 20 or 30 in there, because if not, there's... I just end up with too many. So you can't even see the substrate. But yeah, this is kind of like digging through the soil for worms. Yeah. There are some dead ones though. Oh, no, nope, that one's not dead. Like I said, they play dead. It messes with me every time. I'm like that one looks pretty dead. It's co <laughs> covered in soil and not moving. But I've been doing this with each and every bin, and I've got like almost 30, 31 bins. Oh, wow. ow. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 a at least a two or three day job and plus waiting for them to pop up on the surface on the couple of bins that I've set aside uh, with all the leftover substrate. Even then it just the difference in you having all those mice is you're making money and me having all these mice, I'm losing money. Sadly, the rate that they keep raising my rent um, and the amount my car cost me, I didn't. I regret buying a car that I have to pay payments on. Uh, this is just helping me get through, get by on the rent. Um, I probably could do better with this. I probably could sell more uh, if I... I try on Facebook Marketplace, but people are so weird sometimes. Some people are very shady on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, I've heard that. I have sometimes I have good luck and I meet new people, but then those people end up. Oh yeah, I always uh, I always 
meet new friends on there that are into ice pods as much as I am, and then they want to do trades with me. I've got one that's wanting to do trades with me with all these fancy ones, and she uh, she actually um, she actually decided to put me in her will for if she ever passed, her ice pods would all go to me. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I know, crazy. Cause I when I first when I first met her, she bought her first ice pods from me, and then I uh, I kept just giving her ice pods and said whenever whenever they do well for you if my my colony crashes i might need some so it's good to have someone else out there that has exactly yeah that yep like a little backup colony you it's kind of like something happens oh yeah it's kind of like that with fish when we keep uh fish or shrimp in the hobby um we if we give our friend a type of plant or something and we end up uh getting out of the hobby we can always go back and be like hey man you still got some of those plants or some of those corals or something that i gave you can you give me a yeah. piece of that so i can get started i know people are always giving me stuff that's why i end up with so much stuff i'm i'm either trading or people are just giving me uh, like corals and stuff like that for my fish tank. So what are you doing there, Ed? Well, I'm fixing another one of my dad's refrigerator drawers. Oh, another so one? He was so happy with the one I did yesterday, he gave me another one that he broke a long time ago. Oh. <laughs> You've, he's unearthed a hidden talent, Ed. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh, I found a Spanish orange. Oh. I'll put that one on the top up there. Oh, my uh, crested gecko's watching me. One of them. Now, do any of your your critters eat the isopods? Oh, if I gave them to them, but I, I feed them dubia roaches. That's snubs. He's just uh. He's being a weirdo. That's what he does. Ralph just went through shed, so he's just out and about. And he's Bentley, got oh my color God, going. Too low. Uh, Bentley, Bentley says, Ed, right. I demand a rainbow sculpture. A rainbow sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, some more came out, so I can grab him. Long time no see, Bentley. Blackie, just, what are you uh, working on? I'm working on getting this cigarette into my lungs. <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> uh, gosh. Do you guys have any special plans for the week? Or um, No. Same old. Not me. I'm just determined to get some stuff in the mail in the next couple <clears> days. <throat> I'm hoping tomorrow, but today my my feet are so swollen up that getting shoes on would be impossible. But maybe in the morning I could do it. So I'll see. And then I've got a couple bills that I've got to pay, but I need to sell a couple things and just the usual trying to survive. I hear that. Uh, Bentley, to do that, I'm going to have to go and get a clean glass because a bug shat on the inside of my glass and. There's another squashed bug on the inside of it that I haven't noticed. Oh no, bugs! <laughs> bug poo I, in your glass. Bug I, tried, I tried to remove it with my fingers, but I just managed to smear it all over the place. So, <laughs> it's a clean one. As long as it's not a stink bug or an isopod. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, Chad, I don't know what's going on with my feet. They got better for a little bit, and now the last, like, two or three days have gotten really bad again. But I'm hoping they it's just a little little setback and they'll get better again. You need to go to the doctor, Pam. What is it, leg swell? 
You got leg swells? My feet, my feet and ankles. My wife's been dealing with that. She's had put, been put on blood blood thinners. Uh, before or after the swelling? Oh, uh, after. Uh, her legs swell up like a balloon. Yeah. And then her feet kind of swell. So, they said it's lack of blood flow or something. And she was on blood thinners for her blood clots. Did she have to go on bed rest? Uh, just, just move every once and move uh, every hour or something, and um, and um, go for more walks, more exercise. Doctors said just to keep keep her leg hiked up uh, before she goes to bed on a um, like a pillow or something. Oh crap. I forgot to do something. There we go. Shake it all down. Daniel, hello. So that's how my ice spot bends are set up, just like that. So I got the damp side over here. A piece of cork bark. You can use any. Oh, one just popped on me. Um, you could... Um, Use any kind of bark as long as it's not sappy and as long as it's dry. Um, leaf litter, I use a mix of different types of leaves. Um, cottonwood, regular oak, maple. It's fall, so I collected a bunch of leaves too. Um, but botanicals are a must. Like I go and collect acorns out in the woods. I get botanicals like you would get. Like this is a piece of a um, lotus pod that gets devoured, basically. Uh, you can always put shells in there for food to put on without it getting wet. Um, yeah, they all usually hang out underneath the bark, though. That's how they stay dry. But they like uh, moisture because they breathe humidity um, through their gills. They have gills and not lungs. But I spray Cactus. the, the damp side. Huh? How does that work? If they get too dry, they can't breathe? Yeah, well, they, they uh, it's like a fish out of water or a shrimp out of water. Yeah. But it has to be, yeah, you definitely can't let them get dry. They desiccate. They just die. Huh? I'd say it's like not breathing. Can you put them underwater and see if they live? No, they wouldn't live underwater. They would just they're so if if they're if they can't dry their gills, it's weird. If they can't dry their gills and there's too much water, they drown. It's like the worst of both worlds. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. They can't catch a break. Yeah, I'm gonna put this like to the I'd side. be bragging to everybody I got gills, but then I can't swim underwater. Right. <laughs> this is a mix. Looks like I got some weird mix of ice pods in here. That's just right. So they fall down and fall through the hole sometimes. And I end up with different species in my bins. That's why this is good to do every once in a while. You kind of find those weird species that don't belong and you sort through them. But this one's just, this one was supposed to be my koi bin, and it ended up turning mostly orange, but there are some koi in here. Um, I'm waiting for the koi to really build up with the oranges before I uh, pull the koi, because I, I, I was given four koi, and uh, all of them died but two, and they produced again. And I yeah. put them with oranges, and they produce more. Because the oranges are the orange, actual orange. It's kind of like shrimp. So, if you put that specific color morph with the uh, with 
the regular color morph, they could spit out that uh, that gene. So my thought was, if I put more of the orange wood with the koi, they'll spit out some more uh, of the koi. Hmm. It's kind. Of, it's probably not going to pop up on camera, but there's a couple of koi in here. Um, I'd like to see one. Bob, do you have any isopods? Yeah, I've got two uh, tanks that have big colonies in them. Uh, the uh, the uh, corn snakes and the sweetheart pair of uh, ball pythons that are in a 55. I'm going to um, make this screen bigger so I can see it better. Yeah, I don't think okay. it's coming out that well. It's not focusing. There you go. Oh, there oh, he is. Yeah. Oh, those are cool. How yeah, can I order was, some of those? Um, any of the, if you look up isopods, basically any of the isopod dealers um, has those. I would try to order from someone that's closer to you because it's getting closer to winter and they don't right. do very well with that cold weather. I don't order anything, not even the fish um, or anything this time of year to ship to me because I don't know how the weather is going to be. It could turn out pretty rough overnight. Where do you where do you live? I'm in eastern Washington. So oh, cool. Spokane. It's uh the weather's kind of bipolar here because I'm I'm up higher altitude. Um I'm in the part of town where it's uh I think what's the elevation here? It's almost three thousand above level above sea oh, level. Wow. I'm up on the top of South here. Yeah, so. Oh, no, it's not. South. I'm like 7,000. 7,060. Yeah, so you just got really dry weather? Yeah. When I, used to live, shopping. I used to live in Royal City for about 15 years, but you probably don't know where that's at. I don't. It's kind I'm of still, like, um, it's familiar. west of Othello. Yeah, I don't even know where that is. I'm not familiar with the area still because I haven't really explored much of Washington. Yeah, you all are from Florida, right? Florida, yeah. yeah. I do miss I do miss the water there. I miss the beaches and the, the, the rivers and springs and stuff. I bet. No, I what do What part of Florida were you from? Tampa. Oh, I lived cool. there thirty years. Oh wow. Yeah, it's beautiful place. Just uh, a little overcrowded. I mean, it's like that everywhere right now, though. Every big city is kind of getting overcrowded. And overpriced, of course. For a two-bedroom apartment, I'm paying uh, 1200 It's supposed to be 300 next year. Every yeah, year, it's going up 100 that reminds me, Ed, I know you're uh, vet disabled with your back and stuff. And uh, I got an email from uh, Social Security today. I shared it with my sister because she doesn't do online with her Medicare and stuff. But guess how much raise we're getting next year? 3.2% cost of living. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's not cost of living. <laughs> no, they're calling it COLA, cost of living. Uh, yeah. I forget what the A is, COLA. But yeah, I got that email today, and I'm like, oh, well, wow, that's $3.20 on the 100 <laughs> I know. I'm just glad they're not doing away with it still. Yeah. Well, when Bob was shopping for a lizard, the first, oops, I'm sorry, go ahead, Blackie. I was just saying hi to Dan and to TJ and Divine. I'm not sure if I said hi to Divine yet. Sorry, now nope. your turn. <laughs> okay. When uh, Bob was shopping for his first lizard, uh, Ginger Graves and I went with him to the pet store, and she bought purple and orange isopods that day. Remember that, Bob? 
Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which uh, orange ones? Um, I have no idea. They were the... Um, I can't remember what they're called. I got some in Knoxville after that, and they didn't make it. Oh. Were they big? No, I don't remember them being big. I wasn't keeping them then. That was been like four years ago or something. I have the. I was looking more at the Pac-Man frogs than the isopods. Yeah, and I was. I'm glad I didn't get the Pac-Man frog though, because they're so boring. Yeah, and they eat mice and stuff. So there you go. They eat anything. I got baby cat for that. I had Pac-Man frog when I was a kid. They're I cool. was all enthralled with that uh, <clears throat> blue time skink, and I got him. Divine yeah, said, cool. what kind of substrate do you use? What kind of substrate? Yeah. I make my own. I I use uh, a mix of, um, it's all locally sourced here in the forest, uh, earth grow topsoil and earth, uh, what's this brand? Cedar, Cedar Grove compost. Um, it's. breaks up hard clay soil so it's just basically compost and um and a mix of topsoil and then whatever other um substrate i made a year ago what's up there oh There's yeah well way in here and then i, I think add a little calcium in there depending on the species i I add some more sphagnum moss to get the make the soil more damper. Uh, add botanicals, of course. Um, I add lime to the Cubara species because they're found in mountains by the ocean, or found in caves by the ocean. And the Cubara species are more in like Thailand area. Thai species. I've only got a. A couple of different morphs of this. I have the pandas, the pak chongs, the um, the pigeon, the blue pigeons, the cubaris uh, marina, which you can find in Florida, um, and then the cubaris papaya, which is a peach version of the marina. Okay, I have to say something to everybody. Just because I think this is somewhat noteworthy. I think everybody needs to know that TJ just celebrated her 50th wedding anniversary a couple days ago. Whoa. 50th. That's amazing. Nice. Zero. That's awesome, TJ. Some people get less for murder. Congratulations. My legs keep so I wanted to just make sure I brought that up sometime All tonight, right. so I just did. I've never even been married. Oh, oh no, I didn't yet, Devon. Actually, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, I didn't. Uh, sorry, I was replying to it. I thought comment. you meant like you didn't get married yet. <laughs> yeah, I did that once a long time yeah. ago. Oh. So cork bark, if you ever, I don't know if you guys ever broke it, but if you ever break it, you'll want to break it out this way. Because if you try to pop it this way, it's not going to break. So it's real spongy. So wait, did you squeeze towards the sponge or away from the sponge? So you see how this is uh, the, the tree side where it's attached to the tree? Uh-huh. And that's the cork. You yep. want to split it back. Okay, into the tree. Yeah, yeah. Cool. If you try to go the other way, it's just going to not break e break easily or well. And this way, you, you don't never have control. It always comes out in funky patterns and stuff. Um, I just kind of grab it and snap it. These are my last two good pieces. Did I, Eldritch? I try to put some, some of the cork bark over top of the uh, 
sphagnum moss so they can some of them can hang out over there and it keeps it damp underneath there not too much but just enough and then there's a dry side over here that way they can have their own gradient and go to either side that they want and then i put all the leaves that i pulled from that that batch i put them all in this bin here and i just put them right back in there along with some of the botanicals the cuddle bone I use the cuddle bone for my uh, shrimp too. Yeah, they turned the cuddle bone into nothing over time. I can't believe nobody in chat would hazard a guess at my jump. What is it? Why do walrus like Tupperware parties? I don't know. Why? They're looking for a tight seal. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> adult oh, humor is the best. You know how I was saying about the um my bottle shop having its jokes on the on the chalkboards? Mm-hmm. Yep. I went, went there earlier today, and their new one at the front door is Bono and the Edge walk into a bar, and the barman says, oh, no, not you two again. Mm. Who walks Bono. into a bar? Bono and the Edge. Bono oh. is the singer from U2, and the Edge not is the you guitar. Not you 2 <laughs> I, I was Bono's uh, bodyguard for 15 minutes. Oh, oh nice. wow. Did he give you his sunglasses like he did to the Pope? No, but I got to wear uh, their jacket, like their uh, sparkly jacket that said YouTube. It, or YouTube. And then uh, when I went to trade it in, they gave me a, a concert t-shirt. Nice. It was the, the lemon tree... Tr uh, Con uh, what are they called? Concert. And it had like all four guys, like one in red, one in blue, one in yellow, and one in another color. It was a cool shirt. I don't have it anymore. You know what? Well, I've got working my security thing. on there too, uh, or something. It was the best night. I ever worked for security ever. And then I, I worked Rolling Stones the next week and I had to direct traffic for like five hours out in the cold. <laughs> I didn't even get to hear any of the music or anything. It was uh, terrible. It and I was so excited. <laughs> so what, what I'm doing now is I'm tapping all the ice pods out of the cork. They hide in little holes and then they eventually come out like, they make all these little holes throughout the cork park and then they hide. And then I put the cork in a separate container and let them come out on their own or I check it again. But I just do this a, a few times, tap it with the end of a screwdriver or something heavy without hitting them. I just got to find spots where they're not and tap on it. I wonder if isopods get headaches. Because <laughs> I'd say that would give you a headache. But they, they're just fine every time I do it. Lucky they're in cork, so they've got something soft to bounce off. Right? It just knocks, it just springs them all out of the holes whenever I hit it. And there's one more. This one's covered in them. You probably put it underwater and they'd come out pretty quick. Oh, that would kill them probably. <laughs> Bad idea. There's a lot in here. Oh Is my anyone, God. anyone keeping spiders? Not intentionally. I have some in my bathroom. But I've got some. I'm thinking about breeding because um, uh, there's no more breeders here apparently. For spiders, for the uh, jumping spiders only, I wouldn't do anything else but those. Um, thought about breeding jumping spiders. 
Yeah, they're awesome. So many funky varieties. They're I think hard. Australia's got 700 species of peacock jumping spiders. Wow. Those are the ones that flare up their back end. Yeah. And do their little dances for yeah. drawing mates. Very cool. Yeah, so the cork bark, you can just kind of split it and look in between. There's still some in here. Hiding, of course. Put that back in there, let some more crawl onto it. Like I said, this is extremely tedious. But for me, it's worth it. I enjoy it. It's fun. Therapeutic, no doubt. Oh, for sure. Just like anything, anything that keeps your mind busy. <clears throat> I totally agree, Eldritch. <laughs> Well, you certainly wouldn't like to pee in my toilet then because I have a yeah. nice, healthy collection of brown house spiders. Oh, I've, wow. I've knocked, like I did, was very careless and left them for about maybe two years until the windows were completely covered in cobwebs and there was probably 50 different nests or spots where there was spiders. And, um, yeah, then I got the cobweb brush and cleaned all the cobwebs away. And now I think I'm down to about 20 that are still there. Mm -hmm. Well, they just quite happily rebuild their webs, and I don't mind them because they're eating other bugs and stuff. And, you know, it's Halloween month, so spider webs are appropriate decorations. That's right, yeah. So what does Sarah what I... think about your bathroom with all the spiders? Say again? What does Sarah think about all your spiders in your bathroom? Yeah, she doesn't mind. She's She's got a sensible approach to spiders. This is what I ended up out of all the cork bark species. Wow. Yeah, I gotta go throw them and uh, pull the ones that don't belong in this culture. Like this Q-Bark Marina. There's a lot of them. And there's some that reverted back to uh, natural. It's kind of like colon shrimp. Yeah. You pull, yeah right. you pull the ones that are turning uh, back to the original, the, na the natural brown color. Wow, well, I he says he's glad he's eating Rice Krispies right now. Probably oh. can quite easily imagine that he's eating a bowl of isopods. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I hear they taste like shrimp, but I'm not going to try it. Because hmm. they are a crustacean. I've not seen isopods. I have a couple times in my life went to pour a bowl of cereal and ended up with like the cereal moving with little weevil things. <laughs> oh, I hate those. That's so gross. Little brain weevils. Yeah. Or like your uh, oatmeal or grits. Mm-hmm. Or even flour. Sometimes you'll get a bag of flour that's full of them. Yeah. Not One good. time, I pulled out a peanut butter cup out of the back seat of my car that had been there for a few months. And I was, like, really tired, so I thought I would eat it. So I pulled it out of the back, and I put it in my mouth, and it had tons of the, I don't know, it was probably mealy moths. But I like, bit into it, and it was all gross underneath. <laughs> it was all like silk and worm. Oh, it was gross. Oh, that sounds just so nasty. That makes for a bad experience. Yep. But luckily, I was in college, so you know, you put a lot of stupid stuff in your mouth in those eight days. 
Yeah, there's <laughs> ever a time to eat maggot infested food at college. Yeah. Well, with all the yeah. other stuff you're drinking and eating, it probably all digests okay. It all comes out brown. Unless you had Fruit Loops. That's a breakfast cereal I could never eat. Fruit it's really cool because it makes your poop cool. green. So, uh, so grossly oversweet. Yeah, that is true. Floyd's <coughs> new favorite food is oatmeal. My oatmeal. Mm. What do you think, Bob? Looks good. It's going to be a jack I like the tail. Yeah. Jack Dempsey, did you say? Yeah. It's a female like that, huh? I have no idea. It is. The way you've got it shaped. Is that going to be a female? Is that a female? Uh, I would say yes. Oh. Yeah. That's I what I'm working off of. Yeah. I, I just want to paint this thing. I was also looking at this one, but I couldn't, think, I couldn't tell how big the head versus the tail was so that's why i went with this image because uh they're pretty even sized fish yeah 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 that that one i, I just want to based on the, based on the shape of the head i would say that the that oh. one's oh, that one looks he's got a like noogle a on his head yeah that looks more yeah. male <clears throat> do you think i should do a noogle Oh, excuse me. Is that like a big cock? Like the the bump on its head? Do you think I should? Uh, they are also called the cocks, you know. The do you think that would do better if, in judging if it had that? I don't think I don't think jacks. Uh, they don't get massive ones, do they? No, Not like a, I just. Oh, the rivulatus and stuff. That's like one that of the really that's big. one of the biggest ones I've seen on that picture. Yeah. This one? Yeah. I've got a tank of Jack Dempsey's, you know, like seventy five of them. And none of them have a well, cock that big. Maybe I'll just put a little bit of a bump on its head. <laughs> but, I mean no this problem. is a beautiful female. The lines are just racing through my head, guys. I'm just being so good to not say anything. I know. Anthony Ledge, how are you, brother? Hey, like Anthony. Sun, sunny as heck, and it's just started raining. Where on earth is it coming from? Wild. Mystery rain. Ah. Uh. Well, this is the TMI stream. I was uh, drinking the rest of my water and a fungus gnat was in it. I had to try to avoid from drinking it down. Still drank the water, though. The amount of fungus gnats that go into my mouth and my nose while I'm sleeping, it drives me nuts. Having house plants and ice pod bins and terrariums, we kind of deal with that. Surprisingly, I don't really see them on the floor. Ice pods. Reason for being these uh, plastic coats, they can't really get out of them as long as you keep the sides clean and free from dry, uh, debris or water spots because they can't climb s smooth surfaces.
But when I'm doing something like this, every once in a while, I see one crawling across the floor, but they don't live very long. What kind of fry do you have, Anthony? There you go, Ed. I got its big lip on there. Now I'm going to work on its gill plate, I think. You're taking your fish room down, Anthony? No. Anthony Fishy Friends? Yeah. Taking it down. Right. You're moving house, buddy. Oh, very cool. Gladiator Betta Fry. I was going to tell you something. I was feeling pretty down earlier today, and I forgot about it being Sunday, but I looked up one of those, um, like the suicide hotline things, and I called it, and they patched me through. I guess everything was busy here, so they patched me through to Pakistan. What in the world? They asked, here. <laughs> they asked me if I could drive a truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they asked you, <laughs> they asked you if you can drive a truck. Yeah, because I was calling on a suicide hotline. Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow. Mm. Did they say you're hired? I know I had my phone sitting by me one day, and this is no joke. I had my phone sitting by me on the desk, and I was watching YouTube videos, and um, Sarah came on and said, um, do you want me to call the National Suicide Hotline for you? And I was like, no! <laughs> God, no! It's like, Jesus Christ, No! <laughs> That's what I don't like about the phones and stuff nowadays is they, they're always listening to you. Oh my gosh. They, they still listen to you. Now you're going to get uh, information on it. What you talk about. Every time you talk about something, they, they send you, give you advertisement on it. Yeah. Well, I got videos showing how to harvest walnuts after, after the show. <laughs> I talked about walnuts earlier on the show. Yeah. And then when I was upstairs, I was I was uh, watching that football game with my dad and I checked my YouTube and it was giving me walnut stuff. Yep, yep. I'm telling you, there's no people worry about, you know, the government like implanting tracking chips when you get a when you get a, a shot that's ridiculous because they track you all anyway <laughs> that's funny people worry about tiktok and the chinese and all that but yeah it's like, like i mean all you got to do is have your phone sitting beside you while you're watching youtube videos and have have your phone right. on and open you want them to call it suicide well, hotline so yeah. what i think it's goofy about that whole tiktok or tiktok thing is they're worried about the Chinese being able to check out your information because of TikTok? The Chinese make the telephone and put all the software on your telephone. Right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I think they don't like TikTok because they can't control it. Right. It's a hell of a platform. I love it. I think in, in China, I think people are limited to 40 minutes a day of TikTok. I heard. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Huh. They put restrictions on it in their own country, but over here, people are happy to watch it 15 hours a day. <clears throat> that would be interesting. Eldritch, he says he found a semi-aquatic cave system <laughs> about 30 miles away. <coughs> oh, that'd be fun. 
<laughs> Maybe some interesting critters inside. There could be. There have been um, some species of fish that I've read about that just they found like existing in one little pool inside of a cave and stuff like that. Yeah, trash cat TikTok's where it's at. Well, but we prefer you to watch us here on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> well, if y'all start keeping snakes, I will. Uh -huh. That's do one that. thing I don't I don't do with snakes. That's why I was late to Pam's stream tonight. I was in a live stream in the chat, and the couple that I like that are going to be in uh, Knoxville next weekend. They asked, they asked if anybody was breeding mice, and I'm like, ooh, 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 I had my hand up because they're having trouble getting their mice to breed. You would have liked the expo here um, last weekend. I was, was at an expo snake. last weekend. It was a exotic pet expo. You had snakes and snakes and then everything else, kangaroos, everything. What in the world? I know exotic. It's, there's an exotic pet club of Nashville. I joined their Facebook page. It's pretty cool living in Tennessee because you can have almost everything. For the longest time, you yeah. couldn't have turtles though. As long, as long as you get it from somewhere else or get it from somebody, you can't get it out of nature. I've only been to Nashville <laughs> one time, driving through there on the way here. So I hope time. you had a nice time. What driving through there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, the drive. The roads the drive. are. Yeah, it's a bit crazy. The interstate there. Yeah, the. I think the city grew faster than the transportation. Oh yeah. To keep up with it, or the highway system. It's usually, how that works. A little right? crazy. It really bottlenecks in a couple of spots real bad. Yeah, it does. Traffic. Yeah. They have some bad potholes on the interstate, too. I hit two or three of them. They're awful. No, These Jack Dempsey's ever... big right. gill plates. Hang on. I want to blow it up so I can see it better. Oh. Okay, show us again. See, they have big gill plates on the side. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to add some big gill plates to these guys. Yes. Okay, go back. I'm not that fun. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Oh, is Jenny leaving? No, I said good eye, Jenny. It's the best time I saw her. It has magic hands. There's a lot of detail on the painting on those, Ed, I'm just thinking. I know. I mean, I really enjoy making this. Yeah. They're really pretty fish. Oh, got The kids go to school for 19 hours a day in China. Damn, I'd Can never make me, that. Are their eyes a solid eyeball with a black pupil, or do they have skin going around the eyeball and it's just a little pupil? Or here, I'll look at more than one image. Okay, if you can't tell, I'll go in there and look at them. See, this is what I've got on this one. I think that's a solid eyeball with a back black pupil. Hmm. But it kind of looks like skin. That's not what I remember mine looking like. Okay. Let me, let me go look. Here, not, there we go. Yeah, that's. What I think they, they got like. skin going over their eyeball. Right, you're right. That's that's right, right there. So it's like skin, just all the way up until the little ball. If we can, if we don't know, no one else is going to know either. So I think you're good there. Oh. 
Well, I'm just not a cichlid guy, so I just don't know these. Like I say, I probably got 75, but I don't remember what their eyes look. Got to find out. Actually, mine have gold around their eyes, Ed. <clears throat> you may have to take a picture of their eyeball for me, and I'll paint. I'll like take all the best parts of all the different Dempseys. Every one of them has a gold ring around its eye. Oh, look at the bunny rabbit. Yeah, I've got a baby bunny, baby cottontail. I've got a couple others, but I'm not sure where I put them. But I've got tonight. I'm trying to sell the baby cottontail and the axolotl. If anybody's interested. Oh wow! You can throw out a twenty dollar bid. Well, they're definitely worth that. Uh, there's so much brown algae on the side of this, but you can see. Let's see. Pam, can I send it? Anything. You aren't showing anything, Bob. No, I was taking a picture. Oh. No. And I just, just sent it to you. It's one of those live photos that moves for a second, but you can tell. I got, got <laughs> Two of them up close. And all of mine have gold around their eyes. It's not brown or blue or black, whatever those others were. Looks like Dan's popped a twenty-five dollar bid on your bunny. Oh, oh cool. Okay. Actually I could just send that to Ed too. To, uh, since he's the one that wants to see it. There you go, Ed. Where is it? I sent it to you as a text. Oh, neat. But you can see there, that's why it didn't look quite right to me. And it's so gold, they're shiny, like the light reflects off of them. Yeah, they have a lot of gold in them. Uh, every one of them's like that. They all came up to the front, and I had to use a flash to make it show up. But they want to be fed. That's kind of scary looking, Bob. Hmm. Is my eyes too big? See how gold they are. No, they've got good size eyes on them. Yeah, that looks about proportional. Yeah. Okay. I'm stretched of arm. And they've got that Jack Dempsey lip. I'm shocked that uh, the Atzalotl isn't going for a whole lot more or being bid on because people love those guys. Yeah. It's so cute. Oh, I'm so hoping I can get to the post office tomorrow. I'm hoping my feet will go down overnight tonight. They're just really sad looking today. I don't see any other bids for the rabbit. Is anybody else interested in the bunny? Daniel bid $25 for it. For the baby, um, it's a baby cottontail. So 
I'm going to say, Daniel, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Nice, Dan. Keep waiting for the guitars and the bass to come in with that drumming. I know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was about to get a spoon and start playing it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, so, I'll bid so 25 for the Atholotl. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Even though I feel like I'm ripping you off on that. Can you hold I just don't have much money again? right now, <laughs> but it's so nice. So can uh, somebody write $25 down for Ed on there? Why wait? Could you do that? That'd be awesome. Uh, I think we all heard you. Okay. Can, can you show the actual level again, please, Pam? I must have been looking at all the birds instead of looking at the screen when you held it up. Ah, yeah. Cool. I remember that guy now. Very good. And then, this is the baby cocktail that Daniel got. And nobody, don't be afraid to outbid me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want Pam to get the most she can, but, uh, yeah, that's a sweet one. Even though everything she does is good. I'm trying to debate if I should add the fins, the back fin on. I think I almost need to do the back fin. These guys have such a long back fin across the t back. Yeah, they do, huh? I think it'd be hard to make it, and then glue it on. Because I prefer to glue the fins on afterwards, because it just seems that I can arrange them better, because sometimes they start to melt in the oven a little. But you... with a thin strip on the top, though, it would be harder to do it that way, I would think. And get it to fit perfectly. Can you... Can you make it thicker on the body and then carve it down once it's cooked? Yeah, I sand them quite a bit. Like yeah, right. this one needs a lot of sanding, but I don't want to do it in here because it just makes too much of a mess. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to do that like on a nice day out on the porch or the sunroom or something. I've done them in here and just everything gets coated in dust. I believe Ed uses a polymer clay, don't you, Ed? Yeah, that he puts yep. in the oven. He puts them in the oven to dry them out. About your clay. And it's actually fish tank safe, but the paints that I use aren't. So... These my mo or my sculptures don't go in the tank. But I think if I could get the paint to pop like this photo, mm -hmm. I think this is a winner. Yeah, it's, I wanted to do a farewell. Oh yes. But, uh, those are cool catfish. I would highly recommend doing one of them. Yep, that would be pretty cool. That'll be a but I'm gonna call I'm gonna call the axolotl yours, Ed. Because I don't that? see anybody else bidding. I think you got the axolotl. Okay, nice. I don't mind if you want to wait till the end. No, that's fine. Just in case. We're good. We're good. Well, I'm ripping you off. I feel You're bad. Good. Don't worry about it. I just I need to get a bill paid, so I'm happy for anything right now. Well, thank you, Pam. I'll, uh, can I PayPal it 
at the end of the show? Yes, you can. Okay. Stick with smoking. It's natural, it says. <laughs> that's, that's craftily worded because the brand is red smoking papers. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and then TJ, I agree. I would alter. That's what they had me to do, and that my right for a big alternate heat and cold like 20 minutes of each, a couple times a day. Yeah, the cold helps reduce it, but the, the heat will increase the circulation to it. The heat was first and then the cool later. So you're both right, according to my doctor. <laughs> So does blood thinners make your feet not swell? I, no, I but don't it, think it, your feet don't it swell. The clot. Yeah, I think isn't when your feet are swollen, it's uh, extra yeah, fluid in your muscly bits and your fatty bits, not just in your veins. Yeah, it's third third page, third space fluid. Well, TJ and I came to the conclusion that I'm I'm probably pregnant because that's the most common cause of feet swelling up. <laughs> and it's been it's been quite a long time since I've had a period too, so it's it's totally possible, you know. That's an alien baby, I bet. <laughs> I was just thinking the problem the problem is is that I haven't like oh. been out of my house for a long time. <laughs> so. That culture is done. Finally. We'll be right back. I need to find a tool. Here's one. <laughs> oh, yeah. So these are my biggest species. I've already done this, Ben. It's actually the biggest isopod species there is. The fade log. Which ones are those? These are the Hoffman say guys. They're all hanging out by the substrate. I mean, let's see if I can get one without. Thank you, thank you, trash cat. <laughs> oh, those guys are big, huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's not even full grown. I think they can get a little bigger than that. It's still a pretty young colony. I just sprayed them and they just scram. Vic, hello. What kind of key opens the door to a haunted house? Oh, that's a little, a little bit obvious, that one, isn't it? Oh, no. If he said a spooky, I would think a skeleton key. Mm. Yeah, I would say a big to one. skeleton key. That's a pretty big one. That is, that is big. They got bigger. <laughs> the Do they bite at all? Uh, yeah, they nibble on you, but they don't. I mean, they don't really bite, bite. At, at the end of Rick's day, he puts his feet in the containers and then nibble off the dead skin off his heels. I just That's found a I big heard. male. This is the dominant male of the culture. Oh, do they get just oh. one dominant male? Uh, they definitely will become... There, there could be like the biggest ones are always going to be the dominant male. Any of the biggest ones in there with the biggest uropods, 
they, they have a higher chance of spending for the female. And then they do they do a thing called mate blocking. So and when they mate, they actually um, the uh, male will get on top of the female and block any other males from getting on to the female. Hmm. It's interesting. Sounds like a smart technique. Right. <laughs> mate blocking. Oh, my crested gecko's watching me. He's uh, colored up nicely. I think he's got his eye on the isopods, not you. Oh, that's exactly what he's watching. That tongue going. He wants to eat. You know what? I'm going to give him a roach. Uh, sorry about the shaking. I'm just uh, feeling this up in higher. Grab him a roach. You guys are getting all the ASMR. <laughs> See if he'll bite me first. Right. Put that in a container in there and he'll go after it. Oh. <laughs> he went all the way around just to come over here. Let's get this roach up. Flip this roach around. See if he goes after it. It probably would have helped if I would have flipped the roach on its belly. Let's see if he can manage on his own. Of course not. There we go. Oh, do I move around? Oh, do roaches breed a lot? Oh, yeah. I've got thousands of them. I don't know what to do with them. I've got way too many. That's just a, a medium. The adults are pretty, they're like palmetto bugs. Yeah, I don't like them. No. So if you ever get a crested gecko, this is what you got to deal with all the time. I just made that food. Ah. And he already pooped in it. So I got to make it again tonight before I go to bed. Is that guy trapped in that bowl? Yep, yep. They poop in the, they poop in their food. I never understood now, it. Do you have to let him out? No, I just I no. They poop in their substrate, and then the ice pods eat it. Um, there's a uh, tiny dwarf whites in there into the soil. He's like he doesn't want to eat the freaking roach right now. Maybe if I walk away. But yeah, but I mean, are you going to let that bug out so it's not stuck in the bowl? Oh, no, he'll get it. If I let it out, then it'll go hide somewhere and he won't, he won't be able to get to it. Oh, the bug is food. Yeah, that roach is food. Gotcha. I'm gonna I, thought it it. I'm I thought that was what pooped in the thing. and. Oh, no, and he then poops it was in stuck. his own bowl. He poops in his own food bowl. They're, uh, they could be gross. <laughs> Whenever I think about dojo loaches, I think about my daughter, Courtney. She was staying with her dad for a little while, and she had a couple of tarantulas, and she, had she like, hid them in her room because she knew that her dad would freak out if he knew that she had some spiders, right? So she had them hid in her room, and she got, like, a... a tub of dojo roaches to feed the spiders and she tripped <laughs> and, 
And the truth that don't do roaches across the room and they oh, went Jesus. scrambling underneath the bookcase and everything. So I'm wondering if he's got like a whole colony of dojo roaches underneath this furniture now. Oh my god. It makes me laugh every time I think about it. Just whoops. Are they locals or are they foreigners? Oh. Jesus. Dojo roaches? Yeah. I don't know where they're from originally. I'll be right back. I'm going to go throw this in the oven. Throw well. Okay. Let me hold on. Way. I want to see it big. Wait, 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 Ed, wait. Show us. <laughs> He's, He's gone. gone. He's gone. But I did that myself one time with a um, a tub of um, oh, what are those little slimy little worms that you grow in oatmeal to feed your fish? Meal worms. Meal Not worms. Meal worms. No, the the little slimy guys. The uh, um, I've got a culture from you. I can't remember what they are though. I can't remember what they're called now. But you make up a base of like oatmeal and water and stuff, and they and they eat the starches. But anyway, they're real slimy and like lots and lots of little tiny worms. And I tripped and threw a whole tub of them all over the wall. They were Ew. dripping off the wall and off my china cabinet. And it's like, God damn it. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> oh, my yeah. milk back. They can't survive very long, but it's still like really gross to have them like dripping off your walls. These are the milk bags. Oh, nice. Grindle worms. Is that them? Grindle worms. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yep. Well done, Daniel. You win a prize. The prize of kudos. The worst, the worst, worst, worst thing I ever did though was um this was many years ago, and I don't think you, you can even buy them anymore, but the, the pet stores used to sell tube effects worms. Tube effects worms are like nasty red worms, and they'll like form into a big ball, and they get them out of like sewer systems, pipes yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so you can get a ball of them from the, from the pet store, and then I would soak them in alum water which made them purge because you want the, you don't want to feed them straight to your fish because they came out of the sewage, right? So you purge them for two or three days, like you'd soak them in, in water with some alum in it, and then you drain that water off and like stick them underneath the sink and let water dribble in, you know, fresh water. And then just keep doing that for two or three days to, to like totally cleanse them. And then you keep them in the fridge because they had to be kept cold. So I had a ball of tube effects worms in the fridge and I decided to make my kids some green jello for dessert. And I slid it uh -oh. underneath the, the bowl with the worms in it. Well, it like I went to check to see the jello was all solidified and it was full of tube effects worms. <laughs> I had tube effects worms all over the jello. It was so nasty. I couldn't eat green jello for like years. I wouldn't touch the shit. <laughs> but luckily I found it before my kids got home from school, so I threw it out so they weren't traumatized. But uh, it I definitely was, traumatized uh, me. <laughs> that was my next question if the kids still ate it anyway. <laughs> oh no, no, I threw it out before they got home from school. <laughs> Have a little bit of protein <laughs> with your jello. It was pretty nasty though, because the tube of worms were like real bright dark red and then in the green jello it was just like oh my god it was so nasty it was so nasty <laughs> but they evidently jello. came out in like a whole ball you know like they always stayed balled up and evidently they like slid themselves out of the bowl and dropped into the jello underneath and like spread out and then solidified in the jello <laughs> Yeah. I wonder whether they're still alive in it. I don't know. 
but it was gross. That's a big guy. Yeah, these are the um, they're milk packs, but they're uh, they're a line from the dairy cows. She fell. Yeah, it's fine. They got big arms. Or oh, legs. These ones are they arms or yeah. legs? Uh, they got a bunch of legs on the bottom and then the long antennas in the front. Yeah, there's actually a lot of collectors. The voice pods. I think this has probably been my last bin for the night. Do a little bit more uh, later on in the week. Probably take a shower and get ready for bed. I gotta work tomorrow. Gotta do my uh, nine to five tomorrow. What's your nine to five, Rick? Nine to five work tomorrow. Yeah, what is it? What do you do for a crust? Oh, I just uh, man the the front doors of a hospital. Security stuff. That's awesome. Uh, it's all right. Be surprised how many people give us a hard time. Yeah, most people's jobs would be good if it wasn't for other people, or not? Yeah. I know that's right. Yeah, people don't like rules. I can understand it, but at the same time, they're there for patient safety. We're, uh, we, we have rules to, to keep out certain... Uh, like, say, if someone comes up and says, hey, I'm trying to see so-and-so, and they have a, a, a search on them because they have a history of whatever, violence or um, issues within the hospital. So How do you identify people be, that quick? So it has to be a hey, patient, Daniel. Uh, Thank you. It's a patient issue. See you, Daniel. So it's, so say if a patient noches, Daniel. has had uh, someone come in and try to sneak them some drugs, aka like fentanyl or something like that, we have to search that patient. Um, I mean that visitor, any visitors that come in that room. And people hate that. People, it's, it's, I understand it's kind of embarrassing to sit there and get searched by security staff, but it, we're trying to make sure you're not bringing something in to help that person in their life. Mm. Um, and people do it. We had someone try to, for a search room, we search everything. We had someone try to bring in a, a stuffed um, bear, brand new with a tag and everything. But I noticed the stitching. I was like, man, this is brand new. The stitching shouldn't be... Uh, looking like it's kind of crappy someone stitched uh, a whole ton of fentanyl inside the bag for the person inside wow. the uh, bear so they can off their cell because that patient was uh, not doing so well is fentanyl now the new meth yeah basically and they have synthetic it's a major thing here in this city. Why do people do fentanyl? It just seems no terrible. I mean, I've that's the lost, same way. But. I've lost my mom to it a couple times. Um, just recently, she had to be brought back. It's, fentanyl is horrible. People are using it until their limbs fall off. It's wild or not. Yeah, they keep shooting up. That guy, yeah. the uh, soft white underbelly YouTube channel. Oh, I has, watch him. Yeah, he has a lot of fentanyl people on there. Yeah, wow. it's interesting. It's really interesting to watch people's. It's just the way they are. It's just weird. 
on drugs, just need the next fix. We all finally woke up. Well, Craig said that fentanyl's bad in Australia too. I believe it. It's it's chemicals. It's kind of like yeah, like you said, meth. Uh, so people just mixing a bunch of chemicals. When I lived in Missouri, the farmer down the street blew his barn up making meth. But I, it shook my house. And I mean, he was about probably a, half a mile from my house, at maybe a mile. And my uh, house kind of shook. And I, my I was playing an online video game, Conan, at the time. And oh, I, I thought that. St. Louis just got nuked because I was like, guys, <laughs> I think St. Louis got nuked. And so I ran outside to look for a mushroom cloud. What in the world? And this guy had a farm, so he had the big methane truck things and blew the whole thing sky high. Wow. wow. Did it kill him, man? Mm -hmm. uh, did he survive I think he it? Did. Um, because they sold the farm okay, to uh, goat farmers, and they were really cool people. No, you're fine. They had pygmy goats that they raised and sold and rented. Cool. Oh, no, my blood broke. Did the goats get cooked too? Oh, the goats came after. They were the new people, oh. Oh, the right, new right. farmers. It's going to say instant feast. <laughs> they missed the barbecue. They missed the barbecue. Yep. Cheers. No, but their son was in jail. He was the pillowcase thief that was robbing everybody's house. You'd steal the pillowcase off the master bedroom and fill it up with stuff and get out. And they called him the pillowcase thief. So <laughs> the second time I got robbed, it was him again. And they said do you mind if we just looked in your bedroom at your pet bed? And it's like, yeah. And then that's when they explained to me that, yep, it's him. They got a warrant and got all my stuff back within a half hour. Nice. Wow. They, they stole a 12-page shotgun, so he had federal, third strike federal charges. Unbelievable. But he didn't blow up with his dad in the methane explosion. Or that meth explosion. Messed that family. Trash cast wants you to say pillowcase again, Ed. Hello, case. <laughs> Did I say Peller earlier? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just I'm just happy that they're asking someone else to say word instead of right. me for once. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, have a mixed bag of accents. I my family's all from Iowa, and now I live in the South and. Missouri talks different than Iowa, so, yeah. You're picking up on it. Yeah, I have a little bit, a few words that I say funny because my mom was from um, Iowa. And she lived al along the Mississippi River somewhere for a while, too. But, yeah, so she, she said, like, a few words funny, and then I kind of picked up on it. And I get laughed at every once in a while. How long were you when in I moved California? To St. Louis, they made fun of me for saying toilet. Toilet. How long was I in California for? Um, yeah. About five years. I lived in LA about five years. I always, I always thought you had a bit of a California accent, but five years doesn't really justify it, does it? No, I grew up in Oregon, and I've lived in Oregon and Washington. And California, and Texas, well, and Mass Dakota, Massachusetts, and Montana, and Colorado, and Wyoming. Pardon me. Montana's so beautiful. So I've lived in eight states. Idaho is also beautiful. 
Idaho is pretty, but um, I don't like the, like Northern Idaho is beautiful, but that's like the, where all the um, in heads are. And I don't think I would oh, live I know. with them. <laughs> yeah, my I wife I probably got myself in trouble real fast. <laughs> we probably got a few yeah. things in common with them. Yeah, my wife wants to stay away from there because that, that situation. Oh. The Nazis and the skinheads live in northern, like, live and breed in northern Idaho. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, lots of Hell's Angels. There's a lot of Hell's Angels in um, California and Nevada. We talked to a lady one time in Elko, Nevada, which is just a little tiny one building town gas station. And this gal said she was there by herself and a bunch of Hell's Angels came through and she said there must have been like at least three or four hundred bikes. And she said the one guy, they had one guy that was just pumping gas for everybody and they just kept it going and kept it going and filled up all the gas because there's no gas next gas station from Elko is like 200 miles. So they all filled up their gas tanks and she said they were extremely polite. They got all done and the one guy paid her for all the gas and they left. She said she was scared because she was there by herself, but she said they were very polite to her and paid for their gas. Hmm. My uh, crazy cousin, Tracy, ran off with bikers when she was 15 and we didn't see her until she was like 18 or 19. She came back home wow. and then she married a guy in the air force Academy named Frankie and they, he got stationed in Hawaii. She had two kids with Frankie and then she divorced Frankie because she had an affair with his best friend in Hawaii and married him. His best friend, Frank's best friend, adopted the two kids. So both of uh, Tracy's kids are adopted by the new guy. And then she divorced him and went back to Frank. Oh. And <laughs> then he never took the kids back in legalness. So the one guy had to pay child support <laughs> on his kids. For his kids. Dang. Okay. <laughs> But when he got out of the service, she divorced him too. And now she's she's been with a funeral director guy or a mortician guy for like 15 years now. Hmm. I guess she's she settled down. Yeah. Did she ever talk about what happened with the bikers? Never asked her. I think she was just having fun. Yeah. She wasn't. She connection. did it on her own. Yeah. You did know, Rick say he was going choice. somewhere or did he just disappear? He says he lost connection. Ah, okay. But oh, there he didn't is, have sir. kids or anything with him. Probably a good thing between 15 and 18 to not have kids. Yeah. She was just a free spirit. And she still is. She's a, a nut job. I shouldn't say that, but you know, she is. Yeah, it's your family. She you is. can say whatever you want about your family. Um, back in. No, sir. No, sir. Come here. And the no, odds sir. of Tracy watching this show are like slim to none. She works as an emergency hy dental hygienist. People well, do. So people can be weird. I know what I had a friend in high school. That um, um, her stepfather was a. She was like when she was. I think she was like sixteen. We were about sixteen. Her stepfather was arrested for raping her, and he went to prison. And when we were just out of high school, I heard that her stepfather got out of prison, and she married him. 
And her mother married her fiance that she had before her stepdad got out of prison. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Imagine those family barbecues. Yeah, really. <laughs> that reminds me, do you know why, Ed, why um, crimes are unsolvable in Tennessee? Why, what? It's in Tennessee? Crimes are unsolvable. Murders, I guess I should say. Oh, like crimes. Yeah. I don't know. Because the DNA always matches and there are no dental records. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm telling you that, that, that drag queen I was watching today has got some good ones. Her name's Head of, head of Lettuce. <laughs> head of Lettuce. With green hair. Betty, you need I'll, to stop. I love, <clears throat> I love creative drag queen names. Head of Lettuce. You guys stop. I'm going to rewind the stream to minute. see when I left. To put that in the oh. oven. But did you forget to set a timer? Yep. Uh oh. Mm. I hope it was, we were all on. Okay. It's, it's 20 minutes nice. ago, I was gone. So I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. oh. Baby cat, I'm going to step on you. Yeah, I had a friend who I had a friend who was a drag queen in his younger days. And his, his drag name was Valida Muppin Bucket. Was what? Valida Muppin Bucket. <laughs> Do you have that brand over there of mops and buckets? I don't think so. It's a, name it's a name. European brand, I think. Would you piss off, mate? <laughs> These fish, these fish, these uh, snakes had some marks on them. Sure did. Ah, yes, cat is familiar with the branding. Should have focused it on Nico while I was gone. Yeah. Oops. Pam, when Hi. I go to, I know I've bought things from you on PayPal before, but it's your email or something that I type in there? Yeah. Okay, could you send that to me on Facebook? Yeah, I can well, do that. What? Did you do the PayPal me thing? Yeah, um, I do oh, have wow. a PayPal me thing. Um, um, sure, well, if Grasshopper sir, can you throw that up? The PayPal me? Oh, maybe I can sure. just do it. Grasshopper here. just threw it up. And it's just click and you go straight to the appropriate page instead of having it find it. I don't know if I, my, uh, wait, let's see if I can do it on my telephone. I think it might be on my telephone. Or I'll, I'll, I'll put my email in the in our chat too, so that you have it.
so, so glad that's done. Now it says donate. Is that the same thing as paying? Donate yep. with PayPal? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. Donate, you don't get fees or something, isn't it? PayPal don't take a cut or something? Yeah, they take a cut unless you do it yeah. to friends and family. Ah, oh, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. I knew there was one there. Yeah, you got to click on, on family or else they'll take a cut out of it. Because that's what they do. Well, Huawei's put your new email address in the chat there, Pam. Which lady? <laughs> Evil witch lady? Hey, that'd probably come right to me. <laughs> Redirect. Yep. <laughs> The worm worm. Ain't no good. She ain't no good. She don't like it because I'm making her sit beside me instead of on me. <laughs> I got to run up and see what my three digits are on the back of my credit card. See you, Anthony. Thanks for hanging out, dude. Good to see Hi, you. Anthony. As always. It's always good to see you. See you, Anthony. Don't run too fast. You might bang into the wall. Oh, midair strike. Evil witch lady at gmail.com. Yep, that's me. It'll get redirected to me. Well, that's something I can remember. <laughs> A bit easier to spell than the early one. It's the truth. Who yeah. was. I, as soon as I saw Worm, I had that song in my head. Was it They Might Be Giants? I love I love They Might Be Giants. Yeah, they have great songs. They they have a song. What's the song Worm, you're thinking of? Worm. Little Birdhouse in My Soul? No, Worm. Is that them? I don't know. Very true. Missed you earlier. Worm song. I don't know that song. Of course. I know of my tapeworm tells me what to do. Children. <laughs> sure, it was they might be giants, or we might be giants, isn't it? Not they might be giants. They sing Istanbul. And they also sing, uh, Triangle Man, Triangle Man, he can't do it, no one can. Dr. Worm. I don't have a clue what y'all are talking about. Not well, I'm not going to play it in here because we don't want Pam to get copyright struck. But yes, it was, they might be giants. We might be giants. Fuck, you know. That, sorry, that's twice now. I've said we instead of they. No, they instead of we. Dr. Worm, it's called. Yeah, I saw that's they might song. be giants in concert. Wait, now you're doing it? I oh, know it is they might be giants. God, get it right, Michael. <laughs> They're from Atlanta.
the only worm song I know is the tapeworm song. Hmm. My, system, my system of the down. It must be my Gmail account they want, but it's a classic. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> what about go, 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 go? What's that, TJ? Mm. Gooey, gooey. Gooey. But the little rat is so much better today. I haven't heard it wheeze or sneeze or anything. That's probably a good thing because my solution was quite drastic, wasn't it? Well, but I, it'll just be a wasted rat then. There he is. He's a mouthful. Oh. Probably just a seasonal cold. He's got his food gathered around him. And, and it is a he. As I said, don't give me any girl anythings. No more. Divine says, Bob, do you remember Red Soul Vines, Soul Vines, Teddy Bear? Red Soul Vines, Soul Vines? No, if I heard it, I might, but not the... Name, I sure don't. Okay, I think it went through. Can you check, Pam? Um, yes, hang on here. I added seven dollars for postage and handling. Oh, thank you. And then you have to look up Dr. Wormhead and see if you know that song. You know, the song I wish. I could hear play like more regular is eels. The Marty Bush one. Yeah. It's so hard to find. I tried to find it on Pandora. Oh, I would love to make a short with that. With eels. 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 <laughs> yep, it went through. Awesome. Thank you. I did it right. I remember the first time I ever was doing those things, Blackie had to hold my hand through the whole thing. You remember that, Blackie? I was um, like pathetic. Yes. I didn't know how to do it at all. I don't, but I'll say I do for the sake of the story, having ah. continuum. G'day, Sterle. A poem, gooey, gooey. <laughs> I need to look up what she's named after the worms in Men in Black. I think I looked at it once when oh. we first took her in, but I forgot what they look like. You said look up Mr. Worms? Dr. Worm. That's a They Dr. Might Be Giants song. You'll know it. I reckon you'll know it as soon as you hear it if you're a fan of their music. I don't remember that, uh, Divine. Hey, girl, what do you want? We were hoping a cat would come in. Hey, girl. Yeah. I hear the kitty. It's a uh, rosy, rosemary. Leave her alone. Stop one. Yazzie's okay, got I'm worm go trying to run cats now. It's and listen to this. It's too much. Oh. Or too I'll much. just mute myself.
Well, see, you don't have a tail. You're making well, a leopard get government food. Of course you remember it, don't you? Oh, yeah. They were amazing live. It was one of my favorite concerts I went to. They Plus, opened for the Violent, violent Femmes. Oh, sorry, Ed. Do you remember the Violent Femmes? Yeah, I like They Might Be Giants much more than the Violent Femmes. Oh, me too. It was, it was actually, they didn't just open. It was a giant all-day concert, and there was just like a, a dozen different acts. But they were the last two acts. So they were the, the top two big ones. Lisa Loeb was there, and she sang that one song. Wait, was it Lisa Loeb? Was she the girl that just sang one song? Yeah, Always I mean, forever, me and you. Do, 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 do. Like, it was like some long, some stupid song like that. She sang the same song twice. Because <laughs> she didn't have any other songs. It was terrible. Yeah, that's And then 900 exactly. Foot Jesus was there. Oh, yeah, I remember them. They had some uh, good ones. Not great ones, but some okay ones. Midnight Oil was before they might be giants. Wow. I don't know if you remember them. Well, they're an Australian band, and their lead singer became an Australian politician. Oh, yeah? That's awesome. Yeah. I don't think he's still in the politics game anymore, though. But, yeah, they're very environmentally conscious people, and... uh I still, to this day, believe that the drummer, Rob Hurst, had a much better singing voice than Peter Garrett, the lead singer. Oh. But yeah, they did some awesome harmonies together. The best band of the day was The Urge. Do you remember The Urge? I remember The Urge. They were I'm fantastic. They were from St. Louis. And... Uh, Oh, you've muted yourself, Ed. Somehow. You weren't even touching anything. How does that magically occur? Didn't do it. Pam, did you mute The power is yeah. out of the bottom of my mic. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah. You guys were like coming through the speakers too. I could hear you a lot better than through these stupid earphones. What were you going to say, but you said the urge, and then you were going to say something else, but you got muted. Oh, the the urge was a local St. Louis band, but they were really a fun band. They were really good. They had whole trump or like a whole horn section and they were just great i'll try to find something and send it to you cool okay i can't think of their number one song all i can think of is dating a midget and i know that wasn't their number one song it was just a terrible song that's why i remember it <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. What's GWAR? Wow. They're awesome. Oh, they still are. They still tour around. Um, heavy metal band that dress up in outlandish, crazy costumes. They sound cool. Um, there's a. I think on YouTube oh. there's a pretty cool documentary on them as well with the the history of the early early days. Yeah, they, they were, you know, aside from Kiss, say they were one of the most renowned bands for doing masks and costumes until it became quite a popular thing in the late nineties. 
I should know who they are. Maybe I'll remember. Uh, if you They're... put gore into a Google search, you'll if you know them, you will remember them instantly by seeing their costumes and whatnot. So many trash cat, so many I like. How, how can I formulate a short list in zero time at all? Is Celine Dion on your top five? No, oh. Well, she's Canadian for a start. And trash cat's uh -huh. asking me what American singers do I like. That's what I would have said Devin Townsend straight away, but he's also Canadian. So, you know, I have to cross him off the list. What they sang a song called All Washed Up. That was probably one of their best songs. And then jump right in. Is this the urge? The urge. Huh. Here, I'll play. That's the video. That's the lead singer. I've never seen this video. They're from St. Louis, so they did lots of uh, live performances, like at different events. So I got to see them a few times. They were pretty fun. A good band, though. Very fun. They get the crowd all hyped up. Like the worst concert I ever saw was that song, uh, the Bumblebee. Who was the the song that all I can do is just run and blind and melon or oh, no, Mil that's yeah, they were terrible. We saw yeah. them and they just stood on the stage and barely talked. They just sang their songs and they were boring and no stage presence. Nope, that singer's dead now, though, so you won't have to worry about listening to them live again. G'day, Steve. <laughs> That's cool. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll even pull it from memory. His name is Shannon Hoon. Was his nice name job. was. Yeah, the video was good, but unfortunately the concerts were not. Ed, did you ever enter that Red Devil and the Clash? Steve, Steve no. Austin, uh, I wish I would have brought that Red Devil to the class. Oh, wait. Steve O's there. Steve O, you were there. If I would have entered that Red Devil, I would have destroyed you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. Uh, no, but that Red Devil is in a tank all by himself in a 55 right now because he tore the heck out of my green spotted severin i should have brought them both of those two fish because they were both beautiful beautiful fish to the clash and then given them both away red devil's so, in iso for living up to his name yep he just waited till after the clash it was like two days after the clash he just ripped the crap out of that other fish but the other fish is healing up really good steve i mean it's got a little bit of whiteness on its eye, but that might even go away, too. I'm kind of worried about the Red Devil because he's like, he's really uh, gone whitish. Like he's not popping orange right now. He's kind of going light orange and he just sits in a flower pot all day long. Because he's got no he didn't even eat blood worms I put in there. What's that? He's He's got no one to dominate over and feel all powerful. So you've taken away his source of energy and machismo. It looks like he just quit on life. I mean, he's literally laying in this pot with his eye against the hole, looking out the hole. And he didn't even eat his bloodworms I gave him tonight. Uh -huh. And normally he loves bloodworms. I see you, Divine. Paperwork well, lad. This guar is pretty cool. Yeah, they they do some That's real fun shows. Humor. Uh, poop. 
Oh, we've been going a couple hours, and I'm sure Ed's starting to feel it. So maybe it is time for us to quit for the night. But first, let's see that big, Ed. Oh, this was actually, this is the watermelon on Pleco from last week. Oh, I, yeah. I can yeah. run in the other room and get the, the cichlid. I can, I'll run and get the other one. Go talk okay. to Bob for a second. Okay. Okay. Blackie, yeah, do you they... know what's long and hard? And... Can you hear me? Long and hard. Long and hard. And do you know what's full of semen? I know this one. Yes, a submarine. Yeah. <laughs> That's an old joke. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I, yeah, I, well, I guess go, she has to go go when straight. she's not a spring chicken. This, uh... <laughs> no, I'm not. Plus, it's it's absolutely not like me to go straight to the gutter and talk penis jacks. Not at all. It's a Jack Dempsey. I can't I wait to sand tell. the sucker down and paint it. How do you like that? That's Spin. looking good. <laughs> Are you just going to for the for the scales? Are you just going to use paint to def, to define the scales, or are you going to do texture like carve them out a little bit? No, nope, I just I'm just going to paint it. Are so you going to do I like don't... like do a dark background and then just paint the bright scales dabbed on top, right? Yeah, That's I think I'm going to go with a gold black background, so like black with a touch of gold in it. Yeah. And then go in with these fluorescent colors. Yeah. And fluorescent and make, greens make and the little scales the with them. Yeah. Because that's one of the things oh. that's so striking about them is all the scales are outlined with the dark. Mm. I mean, yeah, I absolutely love too. that thing. That's going to yeah, be a I, lengthy I think it'll painter. be just as easy to paint the scales and to actually make the scales. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, true. Especially since it's got a black skin. So. Yep, yeah, he's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I can't wait till it's done. Well, I'm going to say thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. And thank you, Blackie. And thank you, Bob. And thank you, Ed. And thank we will see things. you Tuesday night. And congrats on selling some Pikachus. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And congrats to those who bought them. Yep. Ed and Dan. So, everybody have a good night. And this is Sunday, so have a good week. Hey, okay. also, go and make sure you subscribe to my channel because a uh, new show starting on my YouTube channel soon. Yep. Oh, yep. Nice. Pretty soon we won't be doing... I won't be doing Tuesday nights anymore because Blackie will be doing his Tuesday nights again. Coming we might, up um, soon. We might be talking about some things that people will get pissed off about. So, you know, when when we're going to be talking about sensitive subjects, I'll be starting the episode with a warning that people uh, who don't want to hear about said subjects uh, should probably switch off. Yeah. And I... The think the way we're talking at the moment, we might be starting with a real doozy that a lot of people are going to hate. <laughs> so be careful when it comes out. Yeah. Uh oh. Now I really want to hear it. You'll you'll fan the squeamish out, <laughs> squeamish ones out up front. Yep. Yeah, but, but then we'll balance it out and we'll talk about some fun stuff as well. But it should be fun. So keep your ear to the railway tracks. And that should be coming up in a few weeks here because our daylight savings is going to be November. November 3rd, I think, something like that. It's not yeah, long. We've got some uh, production stuff to iron out and uh, I'll probably have to record some kind of theme song or something. I think we've settled on a name for the show. But yeah, keep your ears and eyes out. 
Oh, and this will be this will be fun. Hope so. Hope so, indeed. Yep. Well, be sure to let me know for sure on your dates and all that stuff, so we can start like plugging the hell out of it on Tuesday nights. Will do. And thank you again, Dr. Black, for coming up on Tennessee Fish Mafia. That was a real treat. Yeah, no worries. It was a pleasure. I mean, I was feeling a lot more hungover this morning than I do now, but, um, you know. And sorry if we put you on the spot. but Yeah, no, that was all right. I had, I had um, just to, when you asked me to come up, I had some relatives turned up to visit with the elders. Um, so, you know, I had to do the obligatory greetings and whatnot. Sure. And, usher them inside and then i was free to set up my machinery and come on and it was good to see susie q again i haven't seen her for yonks i know hi, huh i said hi princess yeah, i'm just talking to you <laughs> i don't know well, okay I'll... guys we will say good night now yeah. is that the dog that tried to bite me last time Bite no. my shoes? No, this is Princess Penny. Who was the dog that was biting my shoes? Yazzie, wasn't it? No, this was at the at the ark. Oh, I don't remember it. I don't know who that was. Oh, it wasn't Princess okay. though. Okay. No, I've had her it's... over a year. She oh, okay. I'm sorry. That. She wouldn't do ne that. Next time kick harder, Ed. Kick harder. <laughs> I just ran. <laughs> I'm glad it was biting my shoes and not my ankles, though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it was a small okay. Good night, good night, guys. Thanks. Pam. Take it easy, everybody. See good you night. in the next one.